What's up YouTube, Alvaro here, welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets, but we do it in English and Spanish as well, so you can pick your preferred language. And in this video, and as I do it Mondays through Thursdays, I want to make a quick stock market update, so I want to break down some technicals going over the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, which are the most important indices of the United States stock market, and at the end of the video, I am going to break down as well one cryptocurrency and three stocks that are going to be on the top of my watch list for tomorrow's trading session. So with that further ado, let's get started. And when we still have 24 more minutes in today's trading session, we are having pretty much a mixed day in the markets, guys. So as of now, we find Russell 2000 down 0.67%. The Nasdaq is up 0.96%. And the Nasdaq 100 actually reached a new all-time high in today's trading session. The S&P 500 is also up 0.20%. And I think that the S&P 500 is, as of now, reaching a new all-time high. We are going to double-check on that in just a second. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 0.50%. And something that really caught my eye today, guys, is this. So let me show you the performance that as of now, the 11 sectors that trade inside the S&P 500 are having when we still have 23 more minutes in today's trading session. So the worst performing sectors as of now in today's trading session are energy down almost 4%, financials down almost 1% and materials, industrials, sorry, down almost 0.52% and also real estate is lagging today and it is down 0.18%. So what happens, what is going on with these sectors, guys? Well, these sectors, energy, financials, industrials, and real estate are inflationary plays. These are sectors that usually benefit from an inflationary environment. And take a look at this. There is a guy which name is Randall Quarles. This guy is the Federal Reserve Vice Chairman for Supervision. So this gentleman said today during the annual Utah Bankers Association Convention, I am quoting here, the supply chain imbalances and higher demand currently leading to higher inflation are transitory and the United States Federal Reserve has the tools to respond if inflation remains elevated for longer than anticipated. So we have another very important person inside the Federal Reserve saying the same thing that Mr. Jerome Powell has been saying over and over and over and over again. Inflation is going to be transitory and inflation isn't getting out of control and the result you guys can see it so we find today four sectors that would typically benefit from an inflationary environment getting crushed or not getting crushed i mean energy is getting crushed it is down almost four percent but however you you guys can understand the point that i want to make over here the rotation from value into growth and tech is real okay and it looks like and since inflate and since pretty much the Federal Reserve is still sticking to its guns uh, from the perspective that inflation isn't getting out of control. So it looks like the rest of the year, when it comes to the sectors that outperformed during the first six months of the year, energy, real estate, financials and materials and industrials as well, well, it looks like those sectors are going to underperform for the rest of the year. So we will see how that situation plays out. And before going over the S&P 500, I want to show you guys some trades that I closed in today's trading session. And this is a trade with GameStop that I showed you in the video that we posted yesterday. I have been taking trades on GameStop on a constant basis, buying shares at $210, guys. I think that this is, take a look at this, guys. This is the third trade that I take on GameStop purchasing shares at $210. So on Friday, 
I purchased 20 shirts at $209 and I ended up selling out of those 20 shirts today at $220 with 86 cents. So I ended up opening this position, investing $4,192 and I sold those 20 shirts today at $4,417 making $225 over the weekend over here. Nothing uh, spectacular, right? But this was a base hit, guys, and base hits put you in the Hall of Fame. Another trade that I closed in today's trading session was with Ginkgo Solar, guys. In the Ginkgo Solar went on an absolute tear in today's trading session. So let me show you. Let me scroll down over here and pull up the history of Ginkgo Solar. So on March 16th, I purchased 50 shares of Ginkgo at $46.47. So I invested $2,323 and I ended up selling out of those shares today. I ended up selling those 50 shares today at $52.24. So I was paid $2,612 for those 50 shares. So I ended up making over here three hundred dollars and i also closed a swing position on envite and in the case of envite which sticker symbol is nvta i purchased 50 shares on june 7th at 29 dollars and 63 cents and i sold those shares today those 50 shares at 34 dollars and 79 cents so i paid 1481 dollars on june 7th for those 50 shares and i was paid today 1739 dollars for those 50 shares so i ended up making 260 dollars over here and guys every single one of these trades that i just showed you were broken down here on the channel so my system works and obviously none of you uh, must take trades based on my opinion obviously right but you can reconcile the stuff that we post that we show here on the channel with your own research work and the results are going to be excellent so today i ended up making pretty much 800 dollars and anyone can do this guys this doesn't take an einstein so let's go ahead and make money together. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500 and what is going on over here, guys. So we are at 42.90. This is a new all time high. Let me pull up real quick one, the one day, one minute. And yeah, this is a brand new all time high for the S&P 500 at 4,290 points or 42.90. <laughs> Just like traders say. So let me pull up once again the four hour chart and take a look at the RSI. It is a bit elevated, it is at 70 points. So let me pull up now the one, one hour chart. And wow, guys, I mean, from a technical standpoint, there's nothing to complain about the S&P 500 here on the one hour. We can see a clear uptrend and we are trading above the moving averages. However, the RSI is a bit elevated. So what about tomorrow, the S&P 500 pulling back a bit and maybe finding support at a previous all time high at 42.72? which acted as a lower support as well on last Friday, okay? And it acted as a resistance and is a previous all-time high back from last Thursday. So that might be a spot in which the S&P 500 could find support if we happen to see some sort of pullback, which from a technical standpoint would be very but very healthy because the S&P 500 is getting overheated. And I don't want to see the S&P 500 very but very overheated guys i think that this index is due for a pullback and that would be an area in which and you know from a technical standpoint this index should find a good support but there's nothing wrong with the tape guys we can also see a clear uptrend on the four hour and we are also trading above the moving averages okay on the four hour chart and in the case of the nasdaq 100 ah by the way and before going over the nasdaq 100 from a resistance standpoint, guys, for tomorrow's trading session, what are we looking at? I was calling out, by the way, 4,300, if you guys recall. So I think that if tomorrow we happen to see some sort of soft pullback in the S&P 500 and the bulls, and the bulls manage to find support at 4,272, 4,270, that would be a sign that the bulls are gathering strength in order to 
pull up once again and maybe take on 4300 which is a fat number that is going to start to act like a magnet in the case of the S&P and now let's go ahead and take a look at the Nasdaq 100 and this is pretty much live reaction guys because we still have seven more minutes in today's trading session and oh boy do we have a new all-time high in the case of the Nasdaq 100 yes we do 14,530 points is the new all-time high in the case of the Nasdaq 100 and take a look at the RSI guys on the 4 hour it is at 82 points very but very elevated and we can yeah we can make the case that we have already seen in the past the Nasdaq 100 trading with the RSI being at 84 points a bit higher than the current level of this indicator but from a technical standpoint I think that the most uh, healthy thing that could happen to this index would be pulling back a bit so the RSI can come back to earth obviously guys there is nothing wrong with this tape as you guys can see we can see a clear uptrend on the four hour and we find this index trading above the moving averages so if tomorrow we happen to see a pullback in the case of the Nasdaq 100 I am going to be looking at probably the lower support of today's trading session at 14,396 points that area let's say 14,400 points guys acted as a lower support in today's trading session but this is this level this area is also a former all-time high from there goes a the market <laughs> So this index uh, closed up 1.25%. The Nasdaq 100 went today on an absolute tear. So as I was saying, guys, so 14,400 points is a former all-time high that was reached on last Thursday. So I think that if we happen to see some sort of soft pullback in this index, I am we might find support, the bulls might find support at around 14,400 points and from a resistance standpoint guys where we're looking at here 14,600 14,000 I don't know 700 we are pretty much in no man's land and we don't have any previous reference at, at these levels from a resistance standpoint okay and the Nasdaq closed at 14,524 points six points below the new all-time high but i hope guys i don't I, I don't want you know neither the s p 500 nor the nasdaq 100 to get very but very overheated that usually doesn't end well so i hope both indices the nasdaq and the s p 500 to have tomorrow some sort of healthy pullback which is going to be very but very healthy from a technical standpoint and the first stock of this video is obviously amc entertainment good old amc entertainment and this is a stock that we are pretty much breaking down in every single one of our videos and i don't know what happened today with amc entertainment or rather i don't know what happened with amc during the last hour of the trading session because i was recording this video so amc went up today 7.47 percent and we closed guys Pay attention over here at $58.11, slightly above a very important area of previous resistance for AMC Entertainment at $58. Remember, $58 already acted as a resistance for AMC in one two three four and five occasions before but it also acted as a support for this stock back on june 18th so the question is over here guys is amc going to be able to open tomorrow's trading session is slightly above 58 dollars because if that happens then that could be a sign that the bulls of amc could be potentially gathering strength slightly above 58 dollars in order to pull up and maybe take on the next important area of resistance for amc at 64 dollars and 68 cents and if that area of resistance happens to be taken on then what's out for the bulls of amc paying a visit to the 69 dollars which is a previous area of resistance that already acted as such for amc back on june 3rd and as i have been saying in pretty much all of the videos that i have 
posted lately in regard to AMC, guys, as long as the bulls remain trading above $52. Everything is expectable in regard to AMC Entertainment. Anything can happen over here, guys. $77, 100 bucks, who knows? But the most important thing or the most important area of support that the bulls of AMC need to hold is at $52, which is a previous area of support that has already acted as a lower support for this stock in one, two, three, four, five, and six occasions before. And and mind you guys, AMC hasn't broken this support of $52 since June 14th. So what we are seeing over here is a textbook consolidation process and AMC is still looking very but very bullish, no doubt about it. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the second stock of this video, Palantir, ticker symbol PL. TR. Palantir went up today 2.24% and it closed today's trading session at $27.38 and I got skin in the game guys, let me show you. So as of now I have a swing position opened on Palantir, so I own 150 shares at an average cost of $27.45 and as of now I have an unrealized loss over here of $21 and I couldn't care less about that about that unrealized loss so what's my plan when it comes to palantir guys and first of all first and foremost take a look at the rsi guys it is at 78 points on the four hour very but very elevated so i think that palantir is due for a pullback just as i just said in the case of the nasdaq 100 and the s p 500 so if tomorrow Palantir happens to pull back and visit a previous area of resistance and support at $26, I will probably pick up more shares of Palantir. So $26 already acted as a resistance for this stock back on April 12th, but it also acted as a support in one, two, three, four, five, and six occasions before. So if Palantir happens to pull back a bit, we can expect this stock to find a good support at around $26. From a price target standpoint, guys, I am going to close this swing position at $30.44. Take a look at how $30.44 or $30.50 ish acted as a resistance in one and two occasions before for Palantir, but it also acted as a lower support for this stock in early February. So if I can close this trade the way that I am describing it, I am going to probably be able to lock in a profit of 14%. So watch out tomorrow for Palantir, guys. This stock should come back to earth. The RSI is too elevated. And, and take a look, by the way, guys, how $26 coincides with the 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart. So $26, in the case of a pullback, is going to be a very tough spot for the bears of Palantir. So watch out for Palantir, either paying a visit to the $26 and finding a good support over there, and therefore pulling back up, or maybe, who knows, guys, who knows, if Palantir keep on going up tomorrow, can Palantir fill the gap up to $30 with the RSI being at 78 points? That would be really, but really surprising to me. So let's see how everything plays out for Palantir. And now let's go ahead and take a look at another stock that is extremely, but, but I mean extremely overextended, Virgin Galactic, ticker symbol SPCE. Virgin Galactic went down today 1.91% and it closed today's trading session at $54.84 and this stock went ballistic guys after the Federal Aviation Administration authorized this company to carry passengers, right? So what's the next positive catalyst for uh, Virgin Galactic? Because Virgin Galactic pretty much almost reached a new all-time high at $63 on Friday. So what would be the next positive catalyst for Virgin Galactic? So for this stock, in order to be able to burst above all-time high at $63, what would that be? Richard Branson flying into the atmosphere? I don't think that, uh, that and this is my personal opinion, guys, okay? I don't think that Virgin Galactic can burst above all-time high before we have another very positive catalyst, such as Mr. Branson 
Sir Richard Branson flying into the atmosphere, okay? So as of now, this stock is very overextended. The RSI went up to 91 points. And despite the fact that this stock went down today 1.91%, the RSI is still a bit elevated. And I am afraid, guys, that maybe, okay? This is me, you know, just thinking about Virgin Galactic. This company needs money in order to finance their commercial operations. Ah, I think that at these current levels, $54, $55 or $60 per share, there is a big temptation, guys, for this company in order to raise money through a public offering. If Virgin Galactic happens to announce, and I'm not saying that they will, I'm just, you know, uh, making some cases over here, okay? So if Virgin Galactic happens to announce a public offering in order to raise money, this stock is going to take a brutal hit. And on top of that, I've been here, done this before. I have seen Mr. Richard Branson in the past selling out of his shares of Virgin Galactic in order to bail out, in order to, sorry guys, in order to bail out his airline in the United Kingdom. Virgin Atlantic, I think is... That is the name of his airline. So be very careful, guys, because at these levels, uh, I think that this company has a big temptation in order to issue new shares to raise capital. And on top of that, who knows if Mr. Richard Branson sells out of, you know, some of his shares in order to bail out his airline in the United Kingdom. I'm just saying, okay, in my case, there is no way by any stretch of the imagination for me to touch uh, Virgin Galactic at these levels. So if Virgin Galactic happens to pull back and visits the $40, which is a previous area of support that has already acted as such for this stock back on February 24th, and it also did it back on January 27th, that might be a price in which and if Virgin Galactic happens to find a good support over there, I am going to be tempted in order to pick up some shares of Virgin Galactic. On top of that, the 50 SMA on the 4 hour coincides with this previous area of support that I just told you guys about at around $40. So if Virgin Galactic happens to pay $40, the RSI is going to be way lower than now and yeah i think that that is i mean 40 dollars is going to be the only price in which i am going to be willing to pick up some shares of virgin galactic in the short term and as i just said can spce burst above 63 dollars maybe the rsi is at 71 points but we have very good momentum but i am not going to touch virgin galactic at 55 or 60 dollars per share i think that this would be an extremely risky trade that i am not willing to take by any stretch of the imagination and now let's go ahead and take a look at ethereum guys what is going on with ethereum and in the case of ethereum as of now guys i have three different swing positions opened on this cryptocurrency so let me show you one of those positions oh, sorry not here <laughs> over here Sorry, my bad. Okay, this is one of my swing positions on Ethereum as of now. So here I have an average cost of $2,200, pretty much $2,223. And I, ha I have invested so far in this position $6,000 or $6,200. I mean, $6,500 arguably because I have a negative return over here of $300. So what's my plan when it comes to the swing position? positions that I have on Ethereum as of now. So Ethereum has a very important area of resistance right in front of it. $2,200, guys. $2,200 is a previous area of support that already acted as such for Ethereum in one, two, three, four, five, and six occasions before. So in the case of $2,200, we have an important area of previous support that now is acting as an important resistance. I believe that if Ethereum happens to take on $2,200, 
matters, then the next important area of resistance is going to be at around $2,600, which is a spot, which is a level in which the bulls of Ethereum failed at back on June 15th. And if the bulls of Ethereum can take on $2,600, then the next and most important area of resistance is going to be, no doubt about it, $2,900, which is an area in which the bulls of Ethereum already failed at back on June 4th, and they also failed at back on May 26th. If Ethereum happens to fail at $2,200, and if it pays another visit to $1,700, which has turned into a very, but very important area of, of lower support for Ethereum, because it has already acted as a lower support in one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven occasions before, then at $1,700, I am going to be probably picking up more Ethereum in order to add more Ethereum to the swing position, to the three swing positions that I have opened as of now. If we don't see $1,700, guys, I am not going to buy more Ethereum because I think, guys, that as long as Bitcoin doesn't take on $3,500, I don't think that Ethereum is going to take on $2,200. So if Bitcoin, if the bulls of Bitcoin happen to be rejected once again at $35,000, we might potentially see Ethereum paying another visit to the $1,700, which I think that is an extremely attractive price in order to pick up Ethereum for any purpose. At $1,700, guys, Ethereum would be at 60% of its highs. That's a very, but very compelling long-term discount. So in my case, give me $1,700 Ethereum and I am going to be loading up on you. And let's see if the bulls of this cryptocurrency can take on in the upcoming days, the two very important areas of resistances that they have in front of them. The first one at $2,200 and the second one at $2,600. Needless to say, $2,900. The second Ethereum burst above $2,900. I think that the bear market that we are seeing in the case of Bitcoin and Ethereum and those and pretty much all of the cryptocurrencies out there is going to be over. And with Ethereum, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. Remember guys that here on the Bilingual Stock Market channel, we are posting these stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays as soon as the market closes. Well, not as soon as the market closes, but three or four hours after the market closes. So if you want to get the notifications, all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner you have to be subscribed to the channel but most importantly you need to activate the notification bell right up there follow us on instagram guys at bilingual stock market on our instagram account we are posting news and information on a daily basis but most importantly i am making call outs about the stocks that i am about to purchase throughout the trading session so if you also want to have access to that information go ahead and follow us on instagram as well at bilingual stock market and Remember, this is the Bilingual Stock Market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the markets, but we do it in English and Spanish as well, so you can pick your preferred language. But most importantly, this is the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro, and I will see you guys tomorrow once again, three or four hours after the market closes. Peace out. Keep on crossing the market. <laughs>